Hey guys, so a lot of y'all have been asking about how I go about painting my models in Bamboo Studio for multicolor printing. Um, and honestly, it has taken me forever to figure out how to do this because I feel like I don't do anything particularly special when I'm painting my models, so I don't totally know what to like tell y'all. But I just figured I would kind of walk through all the different tools, little like tricks and things that I've learned along the way to just try and make my coloring for my models a little more efficient for different things and hopefully it is helpful to some of y'all and I'm gonna do my best so let's go. One of the first things I'm going to note, ignore the testing chaos, is I use this XP pen art tablet that is connected to my computer so that when I move this pen around I have full control over where my mouse is going around this screen. So that helps make so many things so much more efficient. But in addition to having this, I'm gonna go through kind of my other techniques and things that I use. This was only like 50 bucks on Amazon, so it is totally worth it. All these little buttons here, I have programmed to do different things on Bamboo Studio. So this helps so much. It's definitely worth it if you do a lot of painting for your models in Bamboo Studio. So as far as painting in actual Bamboo Studio, this is a new model that I pulled up that I need to paint today anyway for release. So I'm going to show you all a few different techniques. This one has some sections that are going to be pretty easy to paint, some that are not going to be super easy because if you see this dragon, how it has those really sharp lines there, that means this dragon is a separate body from this tower, but like the wings here, see how they're more melded together? These wings I'm going to have to go in and paint with the more with the hand paint tool. But there's going to be several different things I'm going to go about to try and make that as easy as I can for myself. So open up our painting. And first thing that is easy to do, I think a lot of people go with, is the fill tool here. And you have edge detection on, which means it's going to notice those separate bodies. And see when I hover over different things, it's going to highlight which part it's going to color for you. So this little dial right there is going to change how sensitive that little edge detection is. So see, I pushed it up a lot. And so now it's filling in a whole lot more than if I pull it down here, it's only gonna fill up part of that. So I mess around with this dial a lot, figuring out exactly kind of how much bang for my buck am I going to be able to get when coloring different sections? How much of it is am, am I going to be able to get colored um, without doing too much? And so like this is not quite as much as I would like. Let's go up a little bit. So see, now I'm coloring most of my dragon, but still keeping it separate from the castle. But see like this wing, it taught the uh, spacing is a little bit different on there. So I want to lower it a little and then we have the wing. But the problem here is now you see all these little dots everywhere. That gets annoying. I can go back in with my brush tool and just color over those. Sometimes that is what I end up doing. But what I've started doing more recently that I bet like better is I will actually undo all of that fill bucket. And I'm actually going to go in first and I'm just going to outline all of those edges of this dragon with this tool. This is the like the sphere tool for coloring. So it's going to kind of get all those different edges. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because part of the reason the fill tool has issues with the dragon is because it has all these different little textures and details and stuff in it. Whereas, so we see this edge. If I then now go in with my fill tool and go kind of from the outside in to the dragon, it has an easier time seeing those edges and coloring the stone more clearly. Like see how that, you know, I'm gonna have to touch that up, but see how that stone line, it filled in real nice and clean. So I do that to kind of make my life a little bit easier. You still have to, you know, do some adjustments here and there and fill in those little spots, but there's not nearly of, as many of those little tiny spots that you're gonna have to touch up as it is when I'm doing filling the whole dragon first and then um, having to touch up everything. So I'm going to go and do that, fill in all the outlines of this dragon so I can get him colored in. And once we have the outline of this guy all filled in like that, then we can actually go back to our fill bucket 
and turn off the edge detection. And then it is going to cleanly cover everything. Well, see, we have a gap somewhere. Where do we have a gap? Oh, right here. Cover that. So going back here, it is going to cleanly fill in everything inside that outline that we traced. And so then, and like right there, I missed. I'll just go over that real quick. And so then we still have all these lines from our stones, but going back in with our edge detection again and filling those edges in is going to be much easier than it would have been with our dragon. See how much cleaner that was to do the fill than it was when we had all of the little scattered pieces from our dragon left over. So I'm going to go in and get all of those edges, just adjusting the fill tool to get what I want to get these clean edges. Sometimes I'll go in and just tip tap on these little sections, little kind of pixels that I want colored. Sometimes I'll grab my brush and go in and color them more manually, depending on how defined they are, kind of playing around with the edge detection here to get the type of sensitivity that I want for it. If I want it to pull in more or less, things like that. And another important thing that I actually probably should have come in and started with first is as far as like basic movement tools for these guys with my mouse to rotate around the object. I'm just going to click anywhere off the object to rotate him around to move my screen. I'm going to be right clicking with my mouse and click move him around the screen and to zoom in. I have a little one of those little rollers on my mouse and I'm rolling up, rolling down to zoom in, zoom out. And those are shortcuts I also have uh, program in, programmed into my pen tablet right here that I showed y'all. That way I can still use those movements if I am working with my pen, not with the mouse. Cause I kind of swap back and forth a lot depending on which type of part I'm coloring and doing. So, and let's get back to continuing this. There, so see, now we have a pretty clean, pretty quick two color dragon on our hands. And for me personally, I am going to make this guy. I'm gonna leave him like this, but then I'm going to go in. Some people prefer, like this is gonna be a much faster two color print than a more detailed one, but some people really prefer to have more of those details. So I'm gonna do another version where I have more of the wings and things separated and colored out. And I'm also going to be using my pen tool much more to kind of get those lines more precise since there's not going to be as easy of, um, you know, easy shape such a separation there because those, those details are mostly sculpted in. So I'm going to duplicate it and then pull one over <clears throat> and then we're going to go back to painting. And there we go. So that took about 45 minutes to put, to do both versions of these with the detailed version and the non as much detailed version, but not too bad considering how, you know, how much detail and stuff we get going on here. So that is how I color my models and hopefully it is helpful to some of y'all. Let me know if you have any particular questions about anything that I did or want me to go more in depth over anything, I am happy to do so. You just gotta let me know, you know, what you want to know. Um, so I hope you all have a good one and I'll talk to you later. Bye.